What is Moray effect on a TV and can you do anything about it? When is it safe to buy an open box TV? Are there any more curved TVs that you can buy? Can you use the arc port on a TV to get sound to a non arc receiver? And streaming Dolby Atmos versus Dolby Atmos on disc. Can you really hear a difference? All that and more coming right up. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is You Asked, the show where I answer questions that you ask so I can help you and others with similar tech questions. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer, please send it to youasked at digitaltrends.com. Let's see if your question gets picked to be answered on the show. We start with John Larson who writes that he's upgraded his TV to a 77 inch LG C3 OLED which has an ARC or eARC port, but his Denon receiver is old enough that it doesn't support ARC. Can John still send audio from his TV to his receiver via HDMI since the Denon doesn't support audio return channel or ARC? And the answer is no. Both devices on either side of an HDMI cable must support ARC in order to get audio down the pipeline from the TV to the receiver. The TV and receiver need to be able to do a little handshake and the receiver needs to look for an incoming audio signal on certain lanes of traffic, if you will. Now, John was hoping that maybe there was a streaming device that had a separate audio output. Unfortunately, other than some Blu-ray players, which have dual HDMI outputs, but are also terrible streaming devices, I can't think of a streaming device with a separate audio output other than an old Roku box, which is now over five years old and probably not a good option. So John, as you suspected, running an optical cable from your LG OLED TV to the receiver is your easiest and least expensive option. And running it about 20 feet should be no problem. Volker Uffelman is worried about mounting his new 77 inch G4 OLED TV to the wall using the provided no gap wall mount that LG includes in the box due to concerns about inadequate ventilation. His concern is that on the long term, heat could be an issue. To that, I say Volker LG is smart enough not to promote a wall mount solution that will jeopardize the longevity of the OLED TV. This is not a conspiracy case of planned life shortening for the TV. The G4 has a generous amount of internal heat dissipation technology, and also the G4 comes with a five-year warranty, so LG is pretty confident in the product's longevity. Konstantinos wrote in wondering if there's a difference between the Dolby Digital Plus signal that you get from streaming services versus the Dolby True HD audio that you can get from Blu-ray discs and other high-end sources. So yes, the lossless Dolby True HD signal sounds noticeably better than the Dolby Digital Plus signal that comes from streaming services. There are other factors at play, but the lossless audio signal sounds noticeably better to me, and the Atmos experience, I think, is superior. Now, that doesn't mean that streaming surround and streaming Atmos is bad, but there's no question that my 4K Blu-ray discs sound significantly better than the streaming version of the same title. Michael Orellana, sorry if I mispronounced that, has been struggling with Moray effect for years and is disappointed to find out that his new Samsung S89C OLED TV still produces this effect, albeit probably to a lesser extent than his prior TV. And now he's wondering if even newer TVs still do this, what causes it, and if there's any way to get rid of it. So before we get into Moray effect on TVs, Here's a reminder of what moray is using a moray pattern. Now, even with this image just sitting still, this pattern may appear to you to have movement or swirls in it. But if we move it around slightly, it is almost certain to cause the image to appear to have movement or weird swirls within it, even though the pattern itself is not changing. Now, if you watching were here with me in person and I were to hold up a moray pattern and the image was perfectly still and you were perfectly still, you might not see the moray effect. But as soon as I started moving the image around or you moved around, you would almost certainly see it. Moray effect on TVs describes an instance in which a pattern on the television and not necessarily a dedicated moray pattern that's designed to trigger this kind of effect, but 
any pattern with tight, fine lines in very close proximity to each other, like the plaid patterns on a jacket or the intersecting lines on a skyscraper, as seen in this New York flyover scene by uh, Phil Holland. Any time a pattern like these causes that weird sort of movement or swirling, we call that moiré effect. Now, what causes you to see this effect on a TV is a combination of things. One of those things could be a less than absolutely awesome TV processing in general. And I characterize it this way because frankly, TV processing is hard enough, but these kind of patterns, they are super hard for a TV's processor to handle well. Only the very best video processors can handle displaying these tight patterns without a noticeable moiré effect. I will say though that TVs with poor processing will cause moiré effect on images that TVs with decent processing have no problem handling. So there are levels to this, but the super fine, super tight patterns, those are hard for even the very best TVs. The other part of this equation, it's actually tied to the processing, but it's like a subset of the issue, is a problem with over sharpening an image, especially with compressed or low resolution content. The more a TV tries super hard to create sharpness, and this is especially true in the absence of good pixel information, the more likely you're going to get some moiré effect. Now, you can sometimes reduce moiré effect by reducing the sharpness setting on your TV. Some TVs have sharpness settings that are just set too high by default. And frankly, the sharpness setting should have gone away when we got away from CRT TVs, but that's a deep dive we don't have time for in this video. Anyway, you can reduce the sharpness setting and that will help eliminate some moiré effect. Unfortunately, sometimes TV brands will limit how much influence you can have over the processing that's done by the TV. And we're seeing this now with certain Samsung TV models in which turning the sharpness all the way down doesn't have a ton of effect on the processing that's being performed. So it's possible that even if you turn the sharpness on your S89C all the way down, you may still see some of that moiré effect. Some of that is gonna be a matter of the TV being unable to not create that effect because of the difficulty of the pattern. And some of it is that you can't effectively reduce over sharpening. I will say though that in all my years of TV reviewing, Sony's TVs have historically had processing that best handled moiré effect, but based on some stuff I've seen this year, it's possible the LG G4 might actually be the best at handling moiré this year. We will know more as I get through the 2024 TV reviews though. Tom Reedy writes, would you consider buying an open box 85 inch QN90C if you could save $700? A local chain store has an open box TV marked down to $1,700 versus the regular price of $2,400. What risk should I consider before buying this TV? So Tom, I worked in retail for many years and was once a big fan of the open box buy. I convinced my parents actually to get an open box 36 inch Toshiba CRT TV and that thing, which was built like a tank, still looked good when I helped them get rid of it some 10 years or more later. Today, I think certified refurbished goods can be a smart buy. The great thing about certified refurbs is that they often come with the original warranty and they've been gone over by a professional since they rolled off the factory line. So I think they actually stand a better chance of being problem free for their expected lifetime. But today's open box TVs sometimes give me a little pause. Actually, before I go further, I think we should clarify that I personally see a difference between open box TVs and floor models or demo TVs. Open box simply means the box has been opened. Maybe the TV was used for a short time before a customer decided it wasn't for them. Or maybe it wasn't used at all because it didn't fit on the media stand like they thought it would. Maybe it was used for three weeks before the person who bought it decided they spent too much money or maybe they wanted to upgrade. If the open box model that any of you out there are looking at has a story like any of those and it comes with a warranty, I say get it. Thing is, sometimes you don't get to hear about the TV story, or maybe you don't get told the true story. 
Is it an open box TV because it's got an imperfect panel, maybe one or two dead pixels, or maybe it's got some DSC or dirty screen effect. By the way, here's a link to a video on that phenomenon. But my bigger concern is when demo or floor models are used for a period of time and then reboxed by the retailer and sold as open box instead of floor models. I can see retailers doing this because they don't want to waste a TV for demo purposes when they are on all day long at an absolute maximum brightness. That does take a toll on a TV. Less so on an LCD-based LED TV than an OLED, but it still takes a toll. I guess it all comes down to how much you trust the retailer or the salesperson that you're working with. Find out what you can about the TV. If you trust what you're being told and the retailer is willing to back up the sale to make sure that you're happy, well, first off, get that assurance in writing, but then I would say go for it. It can be a great way to save money. And hey, the TV has been tested to work, so you're probably gonna be thrilled. But if the retailer is like, nope, sorry, pal, it's as is for that price. Well, in that case, I say walk away. Norbert DuPont writes, are any of these manufacturers making large curved OLED TV screens? After experiencing my curved OLED computer monitor, I'm in love. So Norbert, I'm afraid the answer is no. Well, sort of. Curved OLED TVs and LED TVs were a thing for a while, but sales of those models was pretty abysmal, so most manufacturers gave up on them. They really tried to sell them too, claiming that the right radius on a curved TV could help make the far left and far right of the screen equidistant to your eyes as the center. But these TVs didn't really make good on the promise of immersion that was sold along with that curve, most folks would sit too far away from the screen to get the benefit. And I suspect that what you love about your curved monitor is the wraparound effect that you get from it. But you get that wraparound effect because you sit in pretty close proximity to the screen. Most folks don't wanna sit that close to a larger TV-sized screen. There are, however, a couple of exceptions that come to mind. There's the LG OLED Flex, it's a 42-inch OLED TV that doubles as a legit monitor, complete with LED bias lights, and it can be flat or any number of degrees of curved because it's got a motor on it that moves it around. And all of that happens at the push of a button. I loved that thing for the time that I had it, and it was kind of tough to send it back. I suppose if you don't need a really big TV, that product right there would do you right. But if you needed something bigger, there's also the Samsung Odyssey Arc. Now that's not a TV, but it is a 55 inch monitor with built-in speakers. And hey, there are some curved TVs left out there. Samsung has an entry level lineup that includes a curved model, but good luck finding them in a store. That's probably something that you'd need to order online. That's it for this week's You Asked Everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below about what your favorite answer was this week. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos that I think you might like.